500 years ago he washed ashore the sole survivor of a shipwreck and upon the skull of the man who killed his dad he said i'm mad i must eradicate piracy injustice and cruelty and all my sons will follow me so evil doers will believe that this man cannot die the phantom the ghost who walks g'day this is expand the phantom podcast our website is chronicalchamber.com and you can subscribe to our podcast via YouTube or through your favourite podcast apps. Do not forget to give us a rating on your podcast app and tell a mate about us. Now, tonight or today, as you may be listening to this, uh, it is just myself. Uh, Dan and Steve are still having a well-earned New Year's break. Today we've got something special. So I'll introduce you in a second, but we're going to uh, tell you a little bit about myself and the history that we have that i have with our guest uh as you'll be able to see on the on the banner of the podcast we are having a chat with Ivan Pedersen. now myself and ivan we don't always see eye to eye um but what's actually interesting is that we actually go way way back we've actually known each other since uh about the year 2000 back on brian shedden's deep woods forum days a lot of fans might not remember that, but all the oldies probably would. Um, so, welcome, Ivan. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank it's you nice for to joining be here. us. Um, I appreciate you joining us. Oh, that's you... good. I try to <laughs> do my best. I try to be in my best tonight. Oh, your best behaviour. Uh, be yourself, Ivan. Ah, not my best <laughs> behaviour, but my best. <laughs> I can't uh, <laughs> say anything about my behavior. <laughs> so now, we just to uh, try. Do you remember the Deep Woods forum? The Deep Woods? Yeah, the Deep yes. Woods website forum. Yep. Oh, yes. yes, yes. About 20 odd years ago. I often uh, phoned uh, uh, Brian, was that his name? Yeah? Yes. Brian, on the phone to Australia. Cost a lot, but I. I did <laughs> several times, and we have a good chat. Yes, so I remember it well. Yeah, um, f- the website's still out there for the fans that uh, yeah. don't know anything about it. If you go through it, you helped out a lot with the information on the website as well, from memory. Yeah, but uh, I think it was uh, not that much. We had a few discussions, and uh, he snapped up. Uh, something here and there and uh, perhaps I gave my input on uh, I scanned a few uh, panels from uh, Phantomet and I can't remember very much more of of that now but uh, we did agree about everything and uh, he had this um, index that I used for uh, as a base for my index Yep. And just made it a different way with uh, better, uh, yeah, click, click, click. Yeah, it was. Um, we'll get into that. I do want to t- talk to about uh, some of the services you offer as well. However, I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you become a fan of the Phantom? How old were you when you first started reading the Phantom? I'm so old now, I, I can barely remember when I got into Phantom, but uh, I remember the first time I, uh, the first Phantom strip I remember I saw was the one with, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, Warf Rats, Warf Rats, is that correct? Uh, the third Cyberi. Uh, strip i think it was uh, it did run in the norwegian paper around uh, 63 4 early 64 i think i was uh, five or six and wow. someone uh, read the strip uh, for me and i especially uh, remember the one he was thrown overboard with the uh, uh the right. between, uh, the rope around his own, and the anchor and something like that. And it's very impressive. Just that particular strip 
was very memorable, uh, impressive for me. And later I continued to read the strip in the paper a few years later when I learned to read. And in 1967, I bought my first uh, Phantom book. And of course, I was a fan of Phantom, but I also was a fan of a lot of other comics. So um, why this phantom uh, interest, I, I can't really tell. It was uh, widely accepted in Norway as a good comic, I think. My father liked it, and that was important because he had the money. And uh, so it was just, uh, and, 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 and he was the only one from for from the paper i think that had his own book that early and they were format uh, formatted for comic pages so we didn't really think so much about it but uh, i did read the newspaper with a strip and i did read the um, edited uh, stories in the paper by mccoy of course, the newspaper was uh, Cyberi, but I never understood that it was a uh, different artist. So uh, until I, four years later, just found that w one of them had to be made very earlier because the car looked so old. So then it, uh, then I understood a bit. And in uh, 1972, we got the, uh, information to Phantome that there was several artists and McCoy was the current one and then we was very hooked on McCoy. No, uh, Cyberi. Cyberi. So everything should be Cyberi for some years. Yeah. Now, what what's your favourite... You're a long-time Phantom fan. Uh, you've been around, you know, reading the Phantom for a long time. What's your favorite era of the Phantom? Is it the Cyberry years? What about the Wilson McCoy? I don't think I have really have a, a favorite area because if the story is good, the story and the art is good, good uh, cooperation, and I can read it with joy, I think that's good it, it, with Falk. So I think the. Um, if I could pick an area, I think I have to say from uh, the mid fifties to the late seventies, perhaps. Um, more is interesting, but but um, I never read him as a child, and he I had to explore him as an adult, so he did not really get into me the same way as McCoy and uh, Cyberi did. Hmm. So uh, if I pick a story to read again, it's uh, between this this year's fifty, uh, perhaps fifty early fifty, because I I do like the uh, the story about the uh, uh, white uh, or oh, the white monkey. Is it a white monkey? Yeah, and uh, the frog frogs uh, man or oh, the toad man. Told man, I, I mixed this, the names in Norwegian and English, and we we call it Froskemans Piraten. Believe it or not. <laughs> so what? So what, uh, what does that translate to? Does that translate to like the frogmen or something? Yes, direct. Because frog and frosk is the same, and uh, the frog pirates. Frog pirates. They, they, they should be frog frog pirates. Froskemen also. In other words, Froskemen is, is uh, divers, scuba divers in Norwegian. Ah, yes. Scuba divers, pirate, it should perhaps be the closest direct uh, translation from that yeah. title. And it, that was the first, it could be the first book I owned because I got it from an, from an aunt or something. And before I bought my own. So it's very uh, special for me, mm. the story. Yeah. So uh, McCoy has a a big place, and I I like some of them very well. And uh, 
Saiberi, he uh, was a bit uh, too stereotype in the 80s and 90s, so uh, the 70s is the best area for him. I think it's also had uh, something to do with the stories. And the yeah. art had to be a bigger in the frames as well, so not so exciting. Yeah, so Easy there's something we agree that, on. There's something we agree on, Ivan. We're off to a good start. Um, I pretty much agree with a lot of that. Uh, Cy Barry, my favourite era would be the 60s and 70s. Thanks for telling us a little bit about yourself. Um, so not only are you a fan, you're also a creator as well. So you're one of the lucky fan, one of the lucky fans to also be a fan, but also get to work on the Phantom. Um, so that, that's you know that's a it's a, a goal for a lot of fans. Uh, um, from what I've been able to understand is you have worked on various publishers, whether it's coloring, whether it's um, uh, as a consultant and 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 stuff like that. Um, from what I understand, you might be able to correct me. You've worked for, you've worked for Free for Phantom Met, Herms Press, and have you done something for the German comic? Zuberstein? <laughs> yes, but that's uh, that's all just a small favor. But okay. uh, they 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 told me it was of good help, so uh, I did yes. But I will will not uh, tell what that was because it's a bit uh, inside. Yep. But uh, you, it was not you, very much. Oh, okay. Are you enjoying what they're doing? The German series? Yes, I like the, the books very much. Yeah. Um, especially the, the last one. If Have you seen all their books? I've I've got a couple of them. I've got a subscription with a friend in Germany who collects them and then sends them to okay. me. Okay. Um, but yes. I've got a couple. I think I've got the first two or three issues. They're quite large and um, yeah, they, very they're good, good. colours. And, and, the, and the, the fourth, fourth one with... Um, uh, the story about the uh, Walters in the uh, World War One by um, oh, Requiem. By, by yeah, Requiem. Done in colors. Time. That's impressive. The colors yeah. peak. If you want, I could show you that, but uh, if you're not, uh, you can let it be. I have it ready here. But, but uh, I was very impressed uh, with uh, the coloring and the um, Reprint uh, or uh, what you call it, the pages was glossy and bright, and uh, the mm -hmm. color strike very good. So I yes. like that. The what the issues that I've got, I'm very impressed with what they've done. Um, now have you have you done anything for Regal? <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. Um, I I I colored the one story for that for them. Uh, it was published in their um, issue 27. It's the Walter story. Oh, the Vultures. Vultures. That's, no, that's okay. Vultures. Um, what color did you color the V, if I can ask? <laughs> I, I did use... Uh, uh, um, I, I, I wanted to use a, a light skin color. But then I had to rush it because they gave me a very tight uh, schedule, so I forgot. And it was uh, light yellow. Uh, I had in mind something uh, like an old tattoo that have uh, was nearly merely visible on their forehead. Mm. That's that's why I uh, uh, mentioned the, the 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 scary red one in the Swedish uh, book because I I think. It stood too much out. It was almost a warning sign, and and it doesn't compare well with the other colors. I was talking about this with a friend. <clears throat> Even the fruit issues, the covers that um, Anthony Spade did, the two color, the two covers have actually got different colors of the V as well. So I don't think anyone really knows what color the V is. No. <laughs> I tried to to think a bit uh, rational. Because uh, how how would they get there? Me was it a stamp with uh, paint or was it a tattoo? 
I, I think it was like the Phantom Mark we like to think it's just a, a visible, merely visible uh, mark, like a scar or something. Yeah. An old scar. Pit, I'm not sure if you've read the Pity Anderson story. He did uh, like a, a scar for the with the first one, but then I think it would have become like a tattoo, like as yeah. as the group evolved. I guess that's how I personally mm. would see it. But yeah. um, yeah, I, I'm not sure about red or yellow to be honest. No, <laughs> I think if, if red, I think it was a bit bright, but uh, mm. light red, perhaps. Yeah. It's, it's not very important. I was just uh, showing that for uh, fun, just to, just because it was so striking. It stood out the we. Yeah, right. from what I understand, you've also helped Herms Press locate and use and find some daily and Sunday re um, original strips for their publications. Is that correct? Uh it, at first, it was the. Um, I have to think about that. Uh, I did scan uh, 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 most of one of their McCoy Sunday uh, collection because I had this in from our original paper prints. So that one I scanned. Sixty percent, he said. That, that book, I don't know the, the number of the book, but because it, but it was from the um, uh, early 50s or something, 40s and 50s or something like that. I scanned a lot. Uh, from that, uh, later I just uh, sent them some um, better copies of uh, my daily strips. If they or if they miss a week or something, yeah, I uh, find my best version and we uh, work it uh, out, and they make the perfect copy out of it. And sometimes I have the perfect copy. So up till today, I have uh, almost been helping. Helping, I I don't work, but I but I help them because I want their um, collections to be as good as possible. And if I can help, that's good. Yeah. So, so to be able to help Herms with your Sunday, you know, your copies of the Sundays and the dailies, you must have a fairly impressive collection uh, back catalogue of the original um, newspaper strips. Do you have I, like... I have, yes. Or? No, 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 no. I, I am not uh, very serious in my collection. I just... Uh, collect them and they are laying there where when I have uh, scanned them I don't uh, care very much they are laying in a pile <laughs> so uh, I just uh, find them when I have the use for them but uh, I have a lot but uh, it was mostly from that area and I scanned for that book not very much earlier or later and um, I also have uh, Barry from uh, the first to uh, uh, 67, perhaps, 66 or 67. So I have a lot, but not nearly complete. And and uh, not many of these um, prints in the paper are fit to publish just because you scan them. They, they need uh, very much edit, mm. I think. I, I, th that's why I mostly recolor the Sundays today because um, the, the, the Sunday prints in the 70s are not, not good. And in the 60s by Cyberi is uh, a bit better. But the best one is the McCoy from the 50s with the big panels. You see two strips and big panels in the third version. But third is very hard to get by, so so we recolor, and I think I think it's better for printing to do the colors again. Okay, and so and then I believe you are still doing this, but I believe you helped Phantomet with their Chronicle books. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, 
that's that's very correct. <laughs> yes, that with 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 this these books, I can say I work with them. So okay. I don't not uh, help them. I scan every story. Okay. So do you have all of from, the Phantom Met comics? No, but I have my ways to get hold on of them when I need it. Okay. So you've got uh, most of the, them, and then ones you don't have, you borrow and scan. Uh, and I got don't got uh, get the um, the sixties and seventies. They are too expensive to store. I I I, I have um, lent them and rented them or something to scan them and uh, yeah. brought back in good condition. So uh, I managed to get to. Um, we are going to do the 1972 this year, and I have that year. And I have uh, what I have is uh, the 80s and the 90s, and something of the uh, later one. But that's just for uh, for references and uh, scan if I need a panel or so some yeah. page or something. I don't uh, I don't collect uh, seriously. Yeah. Nothing collecting, just uh, the uh, digital versions. No worries. Or, and uh, I believe you now. I don't know what you officially were involved with, but the recent Phantom Met was it a magazine size soft cover albums? There was two of them, which actually featured an Australian comic as well. Did, were you involved with the creation of those? The special, the the two uh, two specials in uh, twenty nineteen. Yes. Uh, yes, I had a lot to do with those. <laughs> I have to think about it, but uh, yes, there was something I, uh, yeah, yeah, I translated the uh, flame flame story first part. Yes, you, you um, know what I mean. By Duncan Munro and Jeff. Duncan Wagner. Munro, yes. I can't remember. I what more I did. I, I wrote some articles. Or something. I, I did not have uh, much to do with the old uh, Phantom at Malaysia that uh, stopped in uh, 2018. Yeah. I don't have anything to do with those. Uh, yeah. I, I saw through them and uh, helped with a, a bit proofing and so, so some. I, 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 and I did run the website for them. With the 2019 series, the two, the two stories, yeah, uh, yeah. Was it only ever going to be two issues, or did the series stop for sales or for another reason? It was uh, mainly because of the sale. Yeah, sales, yeah. yes. Um, I, mean, I don't uh, think they ever want to do just one copy of such a series because they are always testing the market. So if yeah. the, fans the fans like it, we go on just as with the um, Christmas year album last yes. year and the year before that. I am pretty sure there will be one this year as well. Oh wow! I must because admit, it's well yeah. Enough. I must admit the landscape format, in my opinion, I'm not sure. I'll ask what your opinion is. I think. From a, a newspaper strip point of view, it reads better than in a in a, a portrait book. Perhaps, but there's a lot of other uh, things to take account for. So uh, we we have to do the format, mm. and uh, we also try to put it in together with the uh, Christmas album that our um, landscape. So. Uh, the the folks who buy this thinks about them as the same and aha we take two of the old one and we take the phantom as well and it's the same if we made a uh, uh, portrait I don't think it will fit that well among the others perhaps it had something to do with the print run I'm not sure I'm not full bottle on other comics in Norway, but are other Christmas albums in Norway landscape format as well? The Most of them, yes. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's because um, 
they they did run a lot of Sunday from the papers to begin yeah. with, and they were uh, landscape, so it's uh, that makes it's sense. a natural uh, way to hmm. use them that way. And, or uh, uh, I don't think it. Uh, I thought, yeah, three strips on a page. It's a bit there. The only, probably the only negative I could find was, um, I'll include a picture on the YouTube for those uh, who are watching on YouTube, is, I'm not sure if you call it a gutter or, but it kind of looked a little bit off-centre, some of the, the panels. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. I think that have had something to do with the, I think it was a bit, a bit of an, uh, not an error, but uh, we don't we don't think uh, thought it enough about it. So the the latest one, how do you see that? Yes. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, and then we had this uh, this uh, border. Yeah. Uh, to to fill out the the white one, and uh, I think it worked a bit bit better. But of course, if we could have filled every white stuff with three strips, it was uh, would have been perfect. But we couldn't. I, I enjoyed, I do have it somewhere in my room. I think it might be away with the other Norwegian comics, um, but I did enjoy it. It was nice when I flicked through it. Um, and then, of course, for a lot of our listeners, they would know you from the work that you've done with the Free magazine, uh, where you've done a lot of colouring of the older stories. Um, you've done the Cyban, uh, Drummer of Topini, and... Um, I think you did the slave market of Muka and you've done some others as well. Um, what's it been like uh, coloring stories for uh, Glenn and Free? I have uh, done uh, private coloring for a lot of years and uh, I did some uh, color experiment uh, editing in uh, in Comics Review. So I, I was a oh, bit God. familiar with, uh, with the coloring or adding coloring and so. So, uh, when um, Glenn did need um, a story for his, uh, was it his uh, annual, the, the Girl Phantom? Yep. I think. He asked me if I could uh, rush up a color version, but uh, there was none uh, fit to print, so I told him I could uh, color it in, uh, in no time. Almost. So uh, we agreed on that, and we agreed uh, on the price. And uh, next year, I think, was it next year? Then he asked me to do the uh, massive coloring in the uh, trade paperback. Was it that the first was the one? Movie stars? No, was it that later? It was the. Um, oh, yep. That one, and uh, that one, the ring, the ring. Oh, did you color that one as well? Yes, and uh, I also scanned it uh, or prepared this one, the the story of hero. They from me, and um, I <laughs> I did. Uh, Devil's story. Okay. That's that's for the first book. So uh, the uh, the strips I called was from for the late, uh, next one. That was the movie stars and the Mucker story and uh, also the follow up on the uh, Mucker story. Yep. Glenn was afraid it was too much to ask to do all these pages for that one. But I I agreed and it was uh, it was a big job, believe me. Yeah, it, it, it was. I didn't realize that you did all of that. Now, you've done a lot of Lee Fort stories coloring. Do you have like a philosophy when it comes to coloring Lee Fork stories? Do you look at the originals and try and copy it? Do you like, like, tell us a little bit about your process if you don't mind? First off, we did. Dailies, it's very hard to uh, copy anything, hmm. you see. I, I am sure you understand that. Because they have never been 
Uh, I could copy the Swedish colors, but I all the do. trial ones, but they're not always that good. <laughs> I I don't have access to them, <laughs> so I I I think it's better to, and uh, in a way it it's it's hard to do to. Sometimes it's hard to find the right colors for all these uh, daily strips because you have to think on not what the color should be, but also the um, interacting between the colors, background, front, colors on their skin and their clothes. Will a person turn up later? What about these clothes when they turn up later? Is in a dark room? Is there is in does he have a blue sky in the back? Then I just have to pick uh, another color for his uh, suit, his clothes. So there is a lot of thinking when it comes to the um, to the uh, black and white uh, that have never been colored before. So uh, that's the process I have to do in my head, and uh, it can sometimes be a bit uh, tiresome. But for the Sundays, I. If I have good originals, and I think they are really good, I may uh, copy them a bit. I may look at them, I may use the same colors here and there, but I have made up um, a color sheet for the Phantom and uh, something like that. So I, I use my own uh, color for his suit because I want it to be the same through this mm. full story. but. So if you look at the newspaper print, you never get the same color on his suits <laughs> because they are using different ink here and there. Yeah. So I have, uh, I try to uh, simplify and, and, and one important thing there, when I color is, I do the colors I, I like to see myself. Yeah. I think how would I like to read the story? How would I like to see the colors? And I don't try to um, strive to be as uh, that colorist and that colorist. I do my own. I do it my own way. And sometimes I get scolded for that. And sometimes I, they say, okay, it's okay. I really like it. So I'm happy with that. Mm. Now, if I, I'm not a colorist, I'm not a creator, I'm just a fan. If I was to describe your colours, it would be, it's funny when you, from a, a 50s, 60s style colour palette, um, and I really enjoy the colours you do for Wilson McCoy stories. Um, I, it fills me with a lot of nostalgia and, and, and stuff like that. Is, that. is that a fair assessment or? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's fair because... I, I would never use the modern style with the uh, highlights and uh, gradients and it didn't happen for uh, mm. an uh, old McCoy strip, perhaps a bit on the Sunday, but, but the strips are too small to, to use a lot of effects. Yeah. You have the, the rasters, you have you the small uh, panels. If you use too much effects in the colors, you draw the art. Yeah. That's my philosophy. Simple and clear and good looking for the eyes. So it's kind of like highlighting the art, not taking over the art. Yeah, that's important. Hmm. So why colouring? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I always, <laughs> I, I'm not much as an artist to draw, so... Uh, but uh, if, uh, if I go back to uh, the 1972... We had almost every comic book in Norway in black and white. Yeah. The only one not was the Disney comics or the European uh, rare prints of the uh, Tintin or something like that in a magazine. But the rest was black and white. And we read in black and white and everything was fine. But then a new uh, publisher started to print the DC and DC comics in uh, color and uh, some other, but not the Phantom. I was, I was, don't know if I can use the right word, so I tried to use a really kind and say I was not very happy about it. 
I call 1972 the year we didn't got color in Phantomet. It just did not happen until 92, yeah, 20, 20 years, years later. later. Wow. And I was always very, very mad because Phantom did not follow with the colors. I always wanted colors in that magazine. So in 92, I was very thrilled. And uh, some time later, when the computers got a bit better, I could color on the screen. I tried to color the... I, I, I like to color. So mm. it's just that. It, it, it really is a hobby. It's not nothing else. It's just a hobby for me. I can't, can't live from, my, from what I earn from my coloring. Not in a. Then I have to color uh, all day long and uh, warm myself out. But it's fun, and I do a story now and then. And Fru is happy, and uh, Regal is happy, Phantomet is happy, and I get some some money back a bit. Ah, wow, that's good. Um, do you have a story that you haven't colored yet that you're just like? Kind of like your holy grail story, the story you want to color. <laughs> uh, that's that's difficult to, to say. I I like there there are some um, McCoy Sundays I like very well. So uh, perhaps I want will color them someday. But as long as I am not told, I, I don't color the 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 Fark stuff for through. But I listen to what they want to. Use it, use. So, um, so if they have a wish, do they want, they need something, I do that first. Yeah. But uh, so, so that have taken very much time. So I haven't had time to color what I like to color. But I, I, I would like this old uh, McCoy I did read in the late 60s. Green Wally, giant in the Green Wally, or some monster in the Green Wally, or uh, something. Yeah. And yeah. The, 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 the honeymoons, the Jung Phantom, at least these three. And some uh, Bar Barry Sundays, the uh, story of Rex and uh, Spider, the, the, the web of Spidera, in yeah. that area. There are some stories. But I have uh, plans to color the. Um, Maharaja's daughter. <laughs> it's uh, forty-five pages, so I'm I'm not sure I managed to do that. I did the uh, editing the last year for uh, was it the year before for a uh, comics review from cutter to expanded the original strip size okay. and it went uh, very well. So. Um, I have an order to uh, color it if I manage. Someone have ordered it. <laughs> I will not say who. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. It's a big um, secret. One of the things I want to talk to you about is the drummer of Tapini story. Uh, Fru released um, that your story that you did in color in a hundred page issue. Last year, I believe it was in 2022. Yeah, no, that. I, I also it, it was printed with the 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 Lee Fork, the Swedish uh, follow up by Westa, yep. and the uh, true follow up by uh, Tullado. I think is that right? Right. Yeah. And uh, and also he won Brazilian story in the same magazine, hundred yes. pages, and I color the the tree. Not the Brazilian, so I did the colors for all the other three. And uh, you are going to ask me about the size of the panels or the strips. <laughs> I think yes, that's correct. It's a bit discussed because I know that the uh, crew have used the uh, three panels per per um, row oh, earlier. Yeah, because the size of the panels. But um, strangely enough, I I, I insisted on the four. Uh, full strips, you see. Okay. Four strips. I insisted some, of course, if they really wanted to do the other person, they could, but uh, then again, I would um, argue that you can never 
edit such a story in the right way without alter the order of the panels. It's impossible. Yeah, because some it's panels impossible. are double or single exactly. and they're different mm. sizes. You have so, to alter the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so from what I understand. That's the problem. Yeah, if you do three, you're going to have to cut some panels or... So four... Change the uh, order. Yeah, so four technically keeps the story in order. But did you find that, for, again, this is my opinion, that they were a little bit too small? No, I, I don't think so. I It was not perfect. It could have been better with a better size, but uh, I prefer that way rather than... Uh, destroying the the panels or alter their uh, order so uh, i'm i was happy with that and it also was printed that way in the uh, second uh, trade paperback with the yes mucker mucker story and the, oh, the movie, movie stars, stars. yeah so um Fru agreed and we did it and uh, and uh, regal also did it that way that you have this opinion i think it's has a lot to do with uh, what you are used to having a lot of years from through. I think that that's yeah. my opinion. I, I I agree with that. I think a lot of fan. I want to go one step further. A lot of fans' preferences is due to what they grew up with. Yeah, uh, I, that's like a, Australian as well. readers. Yeah, exactly. I think with Australian readers. We like black and white because that's what we've always read. Where Indians exactly. tend to like colour because of the Indrajel comics. So you're probably right. That's why I like the larger panels because that's the way Jim Shepard used to do it. We agree on something else, Ivan. We always agree, but uh, we we did we do agree a bit different ways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Yes. Just remember, we'll all, we both have to just remember that sometimes it's it's a comic and ah. it's okay to have different opinions. <laughs> you were talking before, and it was fascinating listening to you talking about your preference with colour. Should Fru reprint all stories in colour or or have a nice mix like they're currently doing? It's, it's, a, it's a big difference uh, to talk about should and my, how I would like to see a fruit book. I'm not uh, Australian. I have not uh, a long history with, with fruit. I don't uh, collect their books. I don't read their books. So for me, I say yes, every phantom story should be printed in colors. But for fruit, I say no. Of course, they have to uh, listen to their fans. They can't start printing everything in colors and uh, lose. Uh, 60 70 percent of their uh, uh, fans just uh, overnight that, that that will be the end of fru as we know it mm. so th it's simple like that you have to follow you have to eat some camels now and then i'm yeah. sure if uh, you, you can't just turn around and think everything will be the same after you have turned it you will lose fru will lose a lot of customers I don't understand the, the fans who want to read uh, black and white. It's fine for me. I don't care about that. But my opinion is always color. Fair enough. Uh, you can tell me as little or as much as you're allowed to tell me, but do you have much free work in the pipeline at the moment? Early last year, I think we, we agreed on something, Fru and I. I just color the story and if they like it they buy it from me because 90 percent of what i do is for me and my and the stories are mine the colors are mine i i sell to through what they want but something okay. they ask me to do a special job and yes i have one special job coming up this uh, spring it's uh it's a uh, cyber with the follow-up okay enough said about that Yep, enough but, said about uh, that. <laughs> when when it comes to delivering stories, you, if you had, if you remember the uh, giant uh, phantom books last year, there was some coloring from me in uh, at least two two books. I think it was the uh, imaginary uh, oh, imaginary playmate. 
favorite, and it was um, uh, the Golden Sun of Kiloe. Yes, I did the, those. I, I did them for myself or for others who wanted them, and they just got them from me. And it was also published in Norway, and it will be published in Regal, I think, regardless if they want it. So yep. that's how it works. Uh, you can be sure sure that there will be a lot of uh, color stories from me in through in the future, as many as they can take. I also did the uh, um, Mask of Marvel. That was uh, a wish from them. That ah uh, yes, with uh, Paul Mason did the sequel. Yes, mm. yeah that that uh, I can't remember, but that issue was one of the more popular ones on the Chronicle Chamber. Um, survey uh between okay. you and paul mason it was a it was a good knockout <laughs> i think he was the one who uh, was the most popular uh, if i should uh, guess something because he is uh, very popular in uh, australia i'm yes. not so sure about uh, the rest of the world because he's connected to you and uh, he has a very special style not accepted by all so uh, yeah but i think he could do a uh, very good job, and he is proud of it, as he told me. And uh, if I don't like uh, what he do, he has nothing to do with his work. But it may be the full package. I I said that I did not like the uh, the uh, the Vietnam stories, and it's been the same who done them. I don't. Uh, I did not like the setting. I did not like the idea of do some such stories. Had nothing to do with the artist at all. But uh, for me to put the Phantom in Vietnam, it's not the uh, moon uh, landing on the moon. It was to be the same, P impossible. I don't. Uh, it seem don't seem fit for the Phantom, just like that. While we're talking about that, would you say that's the same with the Phantom fighting the Japanese in that World War Two story? Yes, in a way. Yeah, it's a, it's a clear to me that that story was ordered because of the. Um, Propaganda. Uh, oh, yeah, popular yeah. and published relation. Yeah. So uh, to make the, the, the character popular, uh, every every single uh, character, uh, comic book, car poem, strip character should have uh, something to do with the World War II back then. So also yeah. the Phantom. Yeah. If there is one story I don't regard to be in Falk, that's the one. Oh. I don't, th I, don't, I don't think I've... You, you can talk not, well on that. <laughs> yeah. I do not think I would ever hear you say that we could ignore one story. Oh, well, that's... Uh, that's uh, do you, uh, do you uh, know that I uh, I did the uh, editing for the the last print for Fru in Fru, by Fru? Of I that edited story? the story. Yes. I edited it in from, for, from uh, Strip. I did something I don't like to do, but... Uh, I edited it to fit the format with uh, three panels per per strips, <laughs> and I did it without destroying a single panel, but one. And that panel was um, the first panel on the Monday, and was the identical with the last panel on the la uh, Saturday. Uh, Saturday before. So we just it was a w very small panel. And it was the same, and we skipped it. And I had to take away a little bit art, unnecessary art on some panel, but it worked very, very nice. Mm. So um, it looks and is complete, but with three panels. Yeah. So if you can use a bit time and effort on a story, you can edit it, but it's it's even worse with the new strips. I think because that back, one was uh, yeah. mostly followed the old style and just had not like four boxes. Yeah, not too many of them. Where like Mike Manley today, Cy Barry in the seventies <laughs> and sixties, they do different shaped boxes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be a nightmare it's for um, very different. Uh, yeah. Very different. Awesome. No, that's, that's it's great. I really enjoyed listening to you about that. Now, as I said in the intro, um, you and I don't always agree on everything. 
Uh, we're very passionate fans and we come from different sides of the world, different backgrounds. So I've got a couple of topics that uh, we've discussed in the past that I would love for you to be able to share your opinion on here in the podcast uh, because not everyone's read them, read our discussions. Um, so as you may know, we recently created a Phantom Bible, uh, which was basically a guide for creators to be able to have a nice flow on social media, you have shared your concerns, what we created and, and and stuff like that. I would love for you to be able to share your concerns on the podcast that you have with what we have done. Yeah, because uh, the Bible is great enough. I, uh, I am not um, a writer, but uh, if I was, I could need some um, information on uh, something, a, an easy way to find what happened in that the fork story, what happened in uh, a story, what happened, uh, what life did the uh, certain phantom live, uh, has something happened with him, and so on. That's, that's fine. Just uh, as long as you are very clear that fork is fork, and the rest is, is just additional information that can be used very carefully in a new story. You can't go, not go back and say uh, that Fork should have done this and that, and we we want to correct it because it has a better flu. You 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 and and something you you uh, you should not uh, try to do was to put the uh, several uh, number of the Phantom in uh, some year because it at the same time you have uh, put the uh, third Phantom in birth year and end year, and when it it's printed in. It's absolute. Twenty years from now on, it does not uh, make any sense because uh, it's not meant to be that way. Folk uh, never uh, bothered to mention too much uh, numbers and years or something. He tend to say uh, in the seventy century seven. The seventh phantom, my ancestor in the uh, 16th century or something. But later he was a bit more uh, uh, accurate. So, uh, but uh, as a reference guide, it's not bothered me. But when you start take away something and or add something into what Falk have written and was printed in the paper, just because it doesn't uh, seem very uh, nice or accurate or couldn't have been. That's that I think is not very good. So uh, it's a slight adjustment in its form with 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 a, a, a bit more uh, explanation and uh, be careful. This is fault. This is this is um, Team Phantom as a as a, as an appendix or something. No problem. Done with it yet. <laughs> well, it is a work in <laughs> it is a work in progress. Um, you know, I appreciate your uh, feedback. Um, I don't always agree with you. I know you're a fan, and it is your opinion. Um, and I appreciate your feedback. Um, you make a, you make a good point. Maybe you know, maybe I could signpost it better. Uh, I will go back and listen. To what you just said, and uh, you never know, we may make some further adjustments to the Phantom Bible. So appreciate that. Now, you, you were very clear in the way you talked about, you know, Team Phantom End stories, Lee Fork stories. Do you enjoy the non Lee Fork stories? Oh, yes. Uh, Team Phantom have uh, produced uh, something around 1000 plus plus. And I think I have read them, 80% of them, not the last years. But uh, there are very few stories I don't, didn't uh, like when I read it, read them, because they are nice stories. But if you um, try to say, this is how Falk should have done it, and Falk agreed in it, and it took it into him to change his uh, writing, I, I will go so far as to say uh, rubbish. 
that that's not uh, I don't think so they are different they are separate uh, because if 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 another uh, publisher won't do a story he could use something from Falk but it was will never fit into Falk because Falk's work is done he's dead and it's finished it stays there it should never be altered or messed with period but of course they are nice stories most of them all of them if a writer at the uh, team phantom want want a story with the uh, 13 phantom doing this or that very good but you can't say it happened in between the stories by falk it's just something else an appendix I'm trying to give you as, as much room as possible without cutting in so i apologize um yeah, yeah, yeah. what about when creators are adding to a story like a sequel story like the drummer of Topini, Slave Market of New Car, the movie stars. Are you, do you enjoy those or is it trying to be too clever? If uh, the stories are good, I enjoy them and think, uh, why not? Huh. Perhaps he was, uh, perhaps he had a way to get uh, off the island, the drummer, and uh, do this way. Who knows? But Falk did never write about it. So uh, yeah. it did never happen in, in Falk's story. So when you have read it, you go back to the drummer and you know that uh, Falk wanted him to end his life on the island. So be it. But perhaps, what if? The way I, in listening to you, correct me if I'm wrong, you're very Falk over here, everything else over here. Everything else can kind of fit, but Lee Fork's kind of like one volume and we leave that even if it is messy and contradictory. Yes. That's the fun. Yep. That's, that's, yeah, exactly. No worries. Just my opinion. <laughs> and uh, there was some guy who told me he rather did read the version by uh, Team Phantom, the version by... Uh, uh, Kings, uh, Charlton, because they made more sense in the continuing of the stories, but perhaps uh, Fork never meant uh, his writing to be a continuing story, have uh, made sense, have uh, uh, chronicle orders. He just jumped from, uh, pop, pop, had fun. Mm. I, well, I don't think uh, Fork yeah. remember what he wrote uh, 30 years late uh, before that. <laughs> I don't think you remember what he wrote about two or five years before no. that. <laughs> um, continuity was not a big thing with Lee Fork. Fork. I pick a story, I read it from the beginning to the end. I don't try to fit it with the other stories. Take, for example, the um, the, the, the beginning of the, the Jungle Patrol. Uh, there's a there's a private smite. Yep. He turns up in a, one later story as a Lieutenant Smite, but with the, with Cyberi there also a smite, but it's not the same smite. Mm. I don't think uh, Fork uh, remember what he wrote in the fifties and put it in the sixties or seventies stories. There was just that the smite name was something I like to use. Yeah, it might have been so his we, next door neighbor should, or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we should not fall into the uh, the trap to think he have something in mind for continuing. When the story was ended, it was ended. Yep. But one thing he did, I gave him that the next daily stories story always started with the ending of the last one. Yeah, some of them did. Yeah. Phantom was always in. USI in the next story was if the last one ended there. All right, so I got I got another question I'm going to ask you now. Fairly or unfairly, sometimes you have been labelled a troll by some on social media and forums. Uh, in your opinion, do you think that is justified? I don't know. <clears throat> I never seen a troll, even if I'm from Norway. <laughs> yeah, there, there should be a lot of them, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, I have not bothered to look up the, that uh, definition, but I think it has something to do with posting comments just to steer up uh, something, commotion, yeah. or or uh, trigger something. And 
perhaps one or two times, I always have a clear opinion about the topic when I post some post a uh, comment in the in the uh, in a thread. It's because I think it's worth discussion. I think it's wrong in my opinion. And I think I have to add something or correct something. So if that made and I if I do then is told you are wrong, I continue to um, argue till we get to a point. So if someone call that a troll, well, it's their problem. What I can call it call a troll is when someone recently in your uh, on your uh, site posted um, a picture of someone eating uh, popcorn in a thread just because they thought it will be an idiotic discussion. That's trolling. All right. Well, I appreciate I appreciate your feedback on that one. Um, look, you and I, we'd, we've we've actually got. A, I actually think we've got an okay friendship. You've helped Chronicle Chamber out. You've given us a lot of your digital scans, which we use for our social media posts. Uh, for our podcasts and stuff like that. Um, whenever we have questions, we do have we do have civil conversations on uh, you know personally on social media. So look, I've enjoyed what you've uh, given us from a Chronicle Chamber point of view with being able to have some good scans. I've appreciated that. Um, yeah, we don't always agree, but um, I've enjoyed. Uh, a lot of our conversations and I have learned a lot from you and hopefully uh, you feel something similar about me as well. <laughs> um, I, have no, I have no problem. One of the things I do want to touch upon before we do finish and I appreciate your time so far is you have been a great help to I know to a lot of people uh, throughout Europe and also the Indian fans uh, being able to provide them comics from through from Australia and then you've been helping various Australians with German and Norway comics. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this? Are you still doing that? How can fans get in touch with you? And I, I, I have still uh, the uh, arrangement with Fru that they sell their uh, books in Norway or in uh, Europe. It's proven too expensive to sell to uh, USA or uh, perhaps India, some say I'm. I it's it's better because post uh, the postal system from Australia to India is not very good for some fans. I don't yep. know it's if it's for everyone. So I have a few Indians over, well, but I had to trap it down a bit. So no. I just take in what I can have a um, subscription on or they order me to um, to buy, get from through. Uh, earlier, I, I always had a few books in backlist, but they just piled up. What, uh, what the fans should uh, stop thinking is that uh, stop having uh, as a problem is the postage. They should be concerned about the total item price for a uh, fruit and if it's where is it easy is to get them and where can they get them fast and to uh, the best price you can say that a fruit comic cost so much in australia and the postage is uh, you then you have to move to australia to avoid that problem everyone has to pay postage everywhere yeah. in the world yeah. So what's what's important is the total divided on the number of issues you get in the package. And when you get that calculation done, I think I can uh, compete with uh, through to most European countries. And that's the idea idea of it. Okay. That's and what so also want. how can they get in contact with you? What's the best way for them to contact you? Yeah, I have this uh, IP Comics uh, Phantom Shop on uh, Facebook. That's uh, that's the best way. Okay, so if they search IP for comics. IP Comics on Facebook. Yeah, no worries. Um, then you've also so 
you may mention at the beginning of your index. Uh, do you want to briefly explain to us what that is? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, um, 15 years ago, so I got the idea about um, better, in my opinion, index than uh, already existed. But I wanted to narrow it to be phantom stories printed in a newspaper in Norway and also in Australia because we we, we got uh, subscription from uh, through both me and uh, my uh, my uh, co-worker on that one. So uh, we don't want to uh, expand very much. We want to publish what we had the control. We could uh, uh, control the facts, you see. So, uh, and, and I had an idea that it should be a um, cover scan, a scan of the two first strips or first Sunday in the paper stories, a scan of the first pa page in the uh, Team Phantom story, and also, uh, yeah, Team Phantom, yeah. So when you clicked on the, on the title, you end in a page describing the Team Phantom story with the, the first page and the information. And you, when you clicked on the through story, you get, got the same. And the newspaper story got the same. So that's the idea. And it has worked very well, I think. You, yeah. The information we wanted to have there is there, and it's uh, ninety percent correct. You never no get a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering before we go, especially for those who are on YouTube and watching this, could you give us a quick um, zoom of your room because I believe you're in your study and this is where you do your coloring. Could you? Show us a bit of your stuff. Oh, no, no, no way. <laughs> no, it's too much. To... <laughs> what about you show us your, your your screens and stuff like that? As you can see, I'm working on the story. Can you see that? Yep. Oh, wow. And there is, is that the... the... Is that the fence? Fence, yeah. Is that the story? Mm -hmm. The fence. I have the strips uh, mounted in uh, in the sign to view the the result as I color, and I I do my coloring on. Do you see the screen? Yep. That one. With the pen in the back, that's ah uh, yep. There's the pen, yep. So, um, as you can see, I have uh, all done. <laughs> awesome. Lot to, so you use lot to, InDesign, is that correct? Adobe apps on my computer on my Mac. Awesome. It's it's through a uh, subscription. Uh, that's that's mainly because I use uh, these apps when I work for Egmont, my my real real work. <laughs> Editing, um, and blessing. Awesome. Well, I, I appreciate your time tonight, um, or this afternoon, from where you are. Is there anything, any questions, or anything that I've missed or or haven't asked you that you would like to say before we sign off? No, I don't think so. It's uh, we covered a lot. Covered from the what is it the 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 nineteen sixties to uh, the 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 twenty twenty three and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, no, I, I think it's okay. I appreciate uh, your time, Ivan. Um, I hope our listeners have enjoyed learning a little bit more about Ivan, uh, the fan, but also uh, the colorist. Um, if there are any other fans out there who have ideas or creators, ideas of future podcasts or creators that you would like to see interviewed or re-interviewed, please contact us. Our website is chroniclechamber.com. Our email address is chroniclechamber at gmail.com. Now, if you want to be notified of all our new articles, reviews, podcasts, anything else that goes up on our website, 
You can either follow us on our social media pages or you can sign up for your email address on our website and you'll be emailed as soon as something new is posted on there. Uh, as we said before, you can subscribe to our podcast via YouTube or through your favourite podcast apps, including iTunes and Spotify. Ivan, it was a pleasure to spend some time with you tonight. Um, I thought we were quite civil and it was, it was a good discussion. Um, listeners, I hope you enjoyed that. From myself, thank you for listening. Ivan, thank you and happy fencing, everyone. Injustice and cruelty and Have a good time. my sons will follow me So evil doers will believe that this man cannot die The Phantom, the ghost who walks The Phantom, enemies beware The Phantom's always there But you won't find the Phantom He finds you